Well, to discuss these latest developments, we're joined by the Executive Director of Human Rights Watch, Kenneth Roth. Uh, Kenneth Roth, uh, organised states seem basically to have become almost inured to what's going on in Syria. They don't seem to have any kind of a scheme. What does Human Rights Watch feel can be done, particularly given the scenes we've just seen? Yeah, well, maybe first I just comment for a moment on, on this, this very moving report. And, and I take two things away from that. I mean, one is that um, for these people to run the gauntlet of, of you know, the Syrian forces shooting at them, things were that much more miserable at home. And you heard testimonies from some of these people. Um, Assad is really fighting this insurgency by using a classic war crime strategy of draining the sea to get the fish. He's killing as many civilians as possible just to produce a refugee flow like this in order to depopulate the area and making it harder for the rebels to have the kind of civilian support that a, that a rebel movement requires. Um, we have, according to the UN, 60,000 people who have died under the, this barrage and, and possibly many, many more. I think you're right that the international community is, is really just sort of sitting and waiting for the war to, to wind down. Um, where, where it could be countless many more killed. Um, there have been sanctions imposed by the major Western countries. But, for example, an, an arms embargo has been out of the question, a global arms embargo, because Russia has blocked that in the UN Security Council. Bringing in the International Criminal Court has also been blocked by Russia, with, with China seconding it. So I, I do think there are things that can be done. Um, one is that the Arab League, which, which claims to be outraged by this, is still letting Iraq serve as a transshipment point for Iranian arms coming in to, to fuel Assad's killing machine. Um, there is an urgent need for humanitarian assistance, and the West is only beginning to respond with cross-border assistance from Turkey. Up until now, they've been mainly providing it via Damascus, which means that very little gets to the areas held by the armed opposition. So there, there is much more that can be done, but this is a tragic situation, and I think we're all deeply frustrated by, by the inability to stop this mass bloodshed. Are, are you able, in fact, I mean, do, do you feel that these people are, it's clear that Jordan is being a very generous and secure host, but are they getting all the support they need to look after all these people? I mean, if you get 60,000 in in a month, that's a lot. It, it's, it's massive, and indeed, the, the numbers are accelerating. There is an urgent need for more aid for the refugee receiving countries, um, principally Jordan, Turkey, and Lebanon. But there's also a dire need for the people inside Syria. Finally, there was a pledging conference where uh, $1.5 billion was pledged, and, and hopefully that money will actually be received. But, but the difficulty is until just this week, uh, many of the donors were still treating Syrian sovereignty um, the, the viability of, of, um, of Syrian borders as a higher value than the need to get to the people in need inside Syria. Kenneth Roth, Executive Director of Human Rights, thank you very much.